We'll stay with the uh, Indian theme between now and the tea break. You've um, certainly heard of the idea of giving somebody a missed call, right? It's when you dial somebody's number, but then you hang up in order to make sure that there's no connection. You just want to let the other party know what your number is. They can then save that in their phone. Well, in some markets in the world, most notably India, the missed call is actually part money saving, part marketing. As our next speaker is about to explain, um, the uh, missed call idea in India has worked so well that uh, she created a business around it called ZipDial, which was recently sold to Twitter. The founder and chief executive is with us now to explain, ladies and gentlemen, Valerie Wagoner. Hi, good morning, everyone. As, as introduced, I'm Valerie from ZipDial, now part of Twitter, and have recently joined the flock. And I, I'll tell you a bit about what we built at ZipDial and, and what it's meant for brands that we've worked with throughout the markets where we work, and, and also give you some background to the acquisition, and, and we really want to open it up to as many questions as possible of, of whatever people are interested in, whether it's the deal, deal related, the startup ecosystem, uh, the marketing solutions, et cetera. So, so I'm, I'm really here to have a conversation with everyone about what most interests you on, on all of these topics. So uh, to get started, you know, really the insight that was the beginning of ZipDial was the fact that half of the world's population lives in emerging markets. The mobile marketing spends and, and opportunity is growing phenomenally faster than it is in developed markets. At, you know, the data shows that it's growing at 12 times or north of 12 times compared to developed markets. Yet the vast majority of the innovation is coming out of the developed world and kind of planted into the emerging markets. And so our insight was, you know what? People with mobile phones in India and other markets like India behave differently and they need different solutions built for them. So just to give you a couple data points, uh, in particular about India, but the trend is common in the rest of the world as well, in the rest of the emerging world as well. Uh, even though smartphone penetration is booming, uh, it's, we're still talking about only about a quarter of the 700, nearly 800 million mobile devices in India. And that too, what's, what's even more interesting is only one in three smartphone owners in India has a mobile internet connection. And of those who have a mobile internet connection, they're only using an average of 60 MB of data per month. That's four and a half percent of the US average. So it's, what's really interesting is that the, the challenge and the hurdle for adoption is not so much about devices it doesn't really matter you know, whether you have the feature phone or the smartphone. What matters more is how connected are you to mobile internet. And uh, you know, for example, 52% of the mobile internet users in India are actually feature phone users. So, so there's this, this, these interesting dynamics around disassociating the, the assumptions we have about device and connectivity. And really, ultimately, it's, it's connectivity is, is the key. And if you're a brand and if you want to connect with the mass market, you should be thinking about how to get your content in front of people in a way that really demonstrates the value of your brand and makes it accessible to them. So if you're expecting your, your consumers to download a, you know, a 60 MB app and play games with your brand, that's their entire mobile data spend for a month if they were to do literally nothing else. Right, so we have to think about what are those lightweight accessible channels that can get our messaging in front of consumers, ideally even in a toll-free experience, so that they have more ability to actually participate with us. So that, that some of those data points and realities about how people engage on their mobile devices is really where we founded the company. So we've leveraged a lot of interesting dynamics like the missed call that Shiv mentioned in the last talk, the idea that you could see a print ad or a television ad and, and simply respond to it by dialing a missed call, which rings once and disconnects and is free to you, and then you start receiving incoming content. 
And then beyond that, you know, how do, how do we use mobile recharge, given that we're talking about markets where 97 plus percent of users are on a prepaid SIM, how can we use mobile recharge like currency? People don't have bank accounts, they don't have credit cards. The organized retail is sparse. You know, we're, we're talking about markets that have 60 to 90 percent unorganized retail with people buying in cash in small mom and pop shops. So you know, using something like a, an on-pack call to action to use mobile recharge as couponing is a kind of innovation that we've built off of. So, so there's many more examples like this, and, and, you know, and we can talk more about that. But that's really the insight and kind of what we built at the company. And, and ZipDial has achieved over the years uh, more than one billion connections between consumers and, and brands with more than 60 million consumers, uh, especially in India and then also in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and South Africa, where we're also live. And the... The results for marketers are, are really phenomenal, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a technologist by background. I, I don't come from a marketing background, but come from technology and, and the different companies in the Silicon Valley. And so I'm, I'm just obsessed with data and tracking and metrics and results. And so you know, it was always really, really important to us uh, at the company to build solutions that truly drove results. So, we're talking about you know, 17% coupon redemption rather than typical 1% coupon redemption, or you know, it, it reducing leakage in a, in a uh, kind of trade-related promotion by 37%, you know, getting you know, 20 times to 50 times more responses to ads than, than using something like a QR code that is not so relevant to emerging markets. So, so there's, there's lots more you know, case studies and whatnot we can talk about. But that's, that's really the, uh, you know, the kind of benefit we're delivering to the market. And, and as, as Shiv was also talking about in the last talk, we've, we've been proud of the brand we've built around not just the results that we continue to deliver to advertisers, but also, more importantly, that trust to consumers. There's this interesting... Uh, uh, challenge in the market around how do we think about consumer data? And, and we know that it's essential to own as much data as possible, have data scientists on the team, et cetera. But most importantly as well, we have to protect that data and be very, very conscious about, about when we're using it and how so that we build user trust and consumer trust over the long term. Uh, so there's lots of discussions around that as well. So I'll... I'll uh, and just go into a quick little video that kind of gives a little context for, uh, for the acquisition that we did, and then I'll talk more about that. Go ahead. There are more people in the emerging markets who purchased their first mobile phone in the last three years than all of the people that exist in the developed world. These users behave differently and we build experiences for them. That is how we have achieved more than 1 billion connections spread across nearly 60 million users. The world's leading brands make up our hundreds of customers. Zipdial campaigns have proven 70% increase in sales, 30% budget reductions and over 400% increase in the reach of media. And the results keep getting better every day. We are proud to be recognized as global leaders in innovation and mobile technology. It's almost hard to believe that everything we've built has been used by tens of millions of people in countries around the world. Right from Indonesia to South Africa. For five years, Zipdial Innovations have disrupted the way mobile marketing is done in emerging markets. And now we are so excited to bring everything we built to a global level. The possibilities are endless.
you can tell from the last bit of the video, I am really so excited. <laughs> Everyone's making fun of me for the exuberance. <laughs> so, uh, just you know, the, really, when we when we think about um, what Twitter is, and you know, I get asked a lot, like, why did this acquisition happen? And and it's it's really about the fact that Twitter is is a really a global leader in building a mobile audience. You know, the first ever tweet that was sent was over an SMS. And, and it's, it's, a, it's really just a, truly a mobile first platform. Uh, but over the years, of course, it's, it's very you know, built out of San Francisco and very heavily focused on you know, iPhone 6 users with you know, high speed uh, mobile data connections. And, and so what we've been doing at ZipDial, as you've seen, is, is building mobile audiences for brands in particular through this very emerging market-centric approach. So what we're doing is bringing those two platforms together to really make a seamless end-to-end -end experience. So any single consumer exists, you know, we, we, we saw a Shiv slide about the number of devices per household and how that it continues to increase per capita, or as, as per capita income grows. Every single consumer exists across multiple screens at any point in time. Uh, and the consumer may be spend, you know, be the type of user in India who's only using 60 MB of data in a month and spending just a little bit of time in mobile internet experiences, maybe on their feature phone, and spending a lot of time with SMS and voice. Or it may be a user like you and I who's constantly plugged into apps, also sometimes on desktop, web, and, and then occasionally we might get an SMS notification from an application. So any, every single one of us, regardless of income, device type, et cetera, is going back and forth across this spectrum of screens. So really the idea is to bring the, the sort of entry level screen side that ZipDial is really expert in and has built the platform around to Twitter, who ha, you know, has really perfected all of the hyper-connected online screens and make that a seamless end-to-end -end experience that's accessible to every single user with a mobile phone. So this is an example of, a, of Amitabh Bachchan, a Bollywood hero in India who now has a zip dial number uh, or a missed call number to be able to follow him on Twitter. So the idea is you could simply dial this number, it rings once and disconnects, and you're all automatically a follower on Twitter. And that number, it, you know, that's a toll-free experience, and I don't even have to have a Twitter account. I don't even have to know what Twitter is to now be following Amitabh Bachchan and start to get his tweets and content and be able to click through and, and get rich media experiences. The, you, know, you can apply the same thing to a brand. Uh, so there are brands that are working us with, with us right now for Cricket World Cup that are, have partly a you know, dial to follow a brand on Twitter, but also that experience kind of ties in the best of Cricket World Cup that's also delivered to the user in a way that kind of complements the, the brand's strategy you know, when, when sports and cricket is part of their uh, part of their kind of anchor message to the market. So coming to, to, you know, again, the idea of what that means for a user being across screens, it's also that the, we're tying together, you know, when, when the user upgrades from a feature phone to a smartphone or from an unconnected device to a more connected device, eventually installs the app, always tracking that user as a user individually. And all of that data really syncs up. And the power of that is pretty immense. When you know, we're all, you know, if, if you're familiar with digital marketing, you know, there's massive amounts of data that we can get on how people engage online. But what about how people engage offline as well? So, so that's kind of what the power of the ZipDial platform brings to Twitter, is all of this data on users who are really offline, engaging via SMS and voice and lightweight mobile web experiences, who were otherwise invisible to marketers. And now we know exactly you know, where they are, what they're doing, what kind of content they're engaging with, how they're responding back, et cetera. Uh, and, and kind of bringing those two worlds together is, is particularly powerful. And then, as I mentioned, you know, we've, we've kind of our first launch. I'm pretty proud of the team. We uh, the deal 
the deal closed, and then about two and a half weeks later, we already had our first <laughs> big product launch with, with Twitter. So we're, we're giving the teams in San Francisco a run for their money on how fast they can ship product. So that's, that's all my slides, and, and really would love to you know, open it up to any, any and all questions, uh, be it you know, deal-related, uh, or, or startup ecosystem related, or mobile trends, or anything, all of the above. Really? You're willing to talk about the deal? How much did you get paid? <laughs> Was it 30 million, as the internet says? Uh, the, the, no comment. <laughs> she did say she was happy to talk about the deal, but maybe you have other questions. We have a couple of hands going up. The microphone will come to you. Uh, in terms of the deal, what was the debate that happened inside your organization? What were the pros and cons for doing it? The, uh, you know, in so many ways, there, there was actually very little debate, uh, given that, because there, Twitter was buying us for a range of reasons. Uh, the, not only did they, they didn't come in and say, oh, we just want your technology, but fire all the team. And they didn't say, oh, we just want your team, but we don't want your platform, or we don't want your customers, or we don't want your users. You know, so it, it really, they came in uh, you know, with a kind of high degree of respect for everything we had built. So we'll maintain the product platform. The whole team becomes part of Twitter. We are now, our, our Bangalore office is now Twitter's largest engineering center outside of the US, uh, and, and will continue to grow. And, um, and it's really about owning strategy for emerging markets growth end to end. It's not that someone's writing a product spec in San Francisco and shipping it over the pond for us to code. You know, so there's, there's real respect for the, the expertise we've built up. And uh, in that way, it's really an opportunity for us to see through our original vision at an even faster and an even bigger global scale. The other part of that is that uh, you know, while Consumer businesses in India, consumer internet startups and whatnot are getting massive amounts of funding, mostly thanks to SoftBank and the Alibaba IPO. <laughs> but um, the, the B2B business, you know, B2B businesses do not yet see that kind of um, uh, you know, ease of raising funds and whatnot. And, and so there's, it takes a lot of stamina to, um, to start a company and build a company in emerging markets, and in particular when the ecosystem is still very nascent, and there's, so. So, so Twitter didn't buy you for all of those individual parts, but for the sum, yeah. the whole, and, and potentially some sort of additional product development jointly with Zipdial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can you tell us what the roadmap is? Starting first with India, and then we'll take the platform to other markets as well. In, in and particular, the evolution of the platform too. The the right now it's you know the what we've delivered as I mentioned is more about the consumption experience for users, but really important as well as building the expression experience into that. Uh, and there's so there's a lot of exciting features in the roadmap around how to make that that entry level user experience more viral and more expressive. Yes. in addition to just consuming. I was going to ask you about that, as to perhaps we can get the microphone. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, can I just ask one more? Do you think that that means that for B2B businesses in India, for tech businesses, the exit is to be bought? That there isn't, there isn't a route to grow global-sized businesses out of India? Well, if you look at the IPOs in India's history and technology in the last couple decades, the majority of them are B2B businesses, uh, most, you know, and technology services in particular were very successful. Uh, we also have not yet seen in recent years any IPOs I mean, other than, say, Just Dial and, and Make My Trip, you know, the, and that, those were quite some time ago uh, in the last decade. Uh, we haven't even seen the consumer businesses IPO yet, uh, so I think there's, there's a lot a lot that's still evolving about the, the ecosystem in India. Okay, if we could have the microphone uh, come to the front here. Um, and by the way, a trade sale is always a lot easier. And um, 
a lot faster than just having to, than having to go public. Because if you consider all the continuous disclosure obligations, Sarbanes-Oxley and all of that other guff that you have to deal with, it's probably just as well not to be listed. But just before we get your question, can I ask you about that interactivity platform? I must admit, I didn't quite get why you would dial a zip dial number in order to follow somebody on Twitter, unless every time that person tweets, you then get a call back telling you what the tweet is. Is that actually what, yeah. what if, it does? If you're, the, and the beauty of it is that it's tar the experience is targeted to the user. So if I'm a feature phone user who doesn't have the app installed, the, the Twitter platform knows that and will send me tweets by SMS. But if I'm an app user who sees a TV show with Amitabh Bachchan and I dial to follow Amitabh Bachchan or I see an ad and I dial to follow a brand and I'm an app user, it'll, I'll now start following on the app. Right, and so when you're talking about more interactivity, what does that then embody? So the, uh, a, a big piece of that is all of the expression features, like being able to tweet back and share content. And, and also most exciting is the viral impact that that can have. So on ZipDial's platform, we had a kind of friend referral aspect that allows you to essentially invite friends to participate by simply getting your own number and having your friends dial a zip dial number. Mm -hmm. So that proved to increase reach of brand campaigns by anywhere from 200 to 400%, where a consumer, you know, 100 people see your print ad and respond to your print ad, and then they invite in another 400 people. Yes. Uh, and the, the power of that to, you know, getting even offline Twitter followers of yours to then increase the reach and bring in you know, another 400% of Twitter followers is pretty powerful. Indeed. OK, yes, next question. You, you've actually asked 90% of the questions already, so <laughs> I'll just ask one probably unrelated question. Why Singapore has the headquarters? Uh, so Singapore is actually not our headquarters. We have a sales office in Singapore. And, uh, but we're an Indian company, which, we're, you know, as you mentioned, bureaucracy is challenging <laughs> compared to Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Our, our headquarters is Bangalore, and Singapore is a sales office for us. All right, we have a question two rows behind. Do we have any other questions so we can get the microphone to you quickly thereafter? Okay. Just wondering in terms of the flexibility of the system, um, because people are out and about all day at different points in the city, it's talking about um, like coupon redemption, etc. So how, how flexible is, could the messaging be? Could it be a specific point in time by location? to direct people to specific areas. So how flexible is it to have individual messaging, basically? Yeah, yeah so in terms of on the ZipDial platform, and there's sort of the what we built at ZipDial and we're delivering there, and now those things will, over time, may or may not be moved over to, to the Twitter platform. But to answer your question about couponing, there were multiple, so they're both modern trade and, and general trade approaches to, to the couponing solutions. So in the modern trade case, we're talking about integrating with point of sale terminals. In a general trade case where there is no point of sale terminal, it's really more of an on pack solution or where the, the small shop owner himself can use his mobile phone as a mobile point of sale where there's a, different modes of redemption that can happen. And uh, yes, even for offline users, we're able to get location at a latitude, longitude level by triangulating with the cell towers. Yes, sir. Hi, well, you mentioned some staggering numbers in terms of results. Could you mention a few brands or advertisers who have actually benefited greatly? Thank you. Yeah, so our uh, Unilever, P&G, Colgate, uh, Pepsi, Coke, Johnson & Johnson, Merico, yeah, all of the above. <laughs> uh, so primarily but in Would CPG. you mention one or two brands that really stands out? The, some of the, so some uh, interesting, so some of the case studies that I love the best, uh, one is actually, so CPG is our biggest and then second is media companies. Uh, one that I love is um, the Disney Channel. So the Disney Channel did, had a really great strategy of incorporating ZipDial pretty much all day long, every day in the channel, where at different points in time, different phone numbers are flashing on the screen, where people can dial in and, and, basically, and stay tuned in and earn points. And so there would be different kind of contests seasonally 
um, around staying tuned into the channel. And we're driving for Disney nearly 2 million users, engaging an average of 13 times per user per month. And I'm sure, as, as you all know, trying to drive engagement, that is astronomical in terms of like the level of loyalty there. Um, and other ones in particular, so like Gillette razors. We, we've done a lot uh, with them around these kind of viral campaigns that I mentioned, where you know, the user sees an offline ad, responds to it, and then can invite their friends through this simple zip dial system. And they did a lot to incentivize users with uh, access to cricket content and cricket scores, like invite four friends to participate in the Gillette campaign and, and get free cricket scores on your phone. And they would get some around 45 to 65% increase in reach, meaning every 100 users bring in another 40 to 60 odd users. And they, they did a campaign, especially when there was uh, these big cases that in, in Delhi, or these rape cases. And they did a campaign to say, respect women, pledge to respect women, and got 400% increase in reach. So that's, that's, a, that's one I like as well that, that says, you know, a, it was a good campaign that really nailed a particularly, uh, you know, a very timely topic, uh, but also the fact that, you know, it's, it's people from all across the country on any type of device, not connected to the internet at all, but they're building a social movement and a social network really around this cause that they care about through this simple dialing exercise and ultimately kind of building that social graph underneath. That's, I, th I think that's so powerful. Thank you. We have a 45 minute tea break coming up, so I will permit myself one more question. Um, you know, in the West, we obviously have a lot, we're, we're further along the curve towards do not call lists. Uh, earlier on, we were looking at an article which showed that the UK government is looking to spend three and a half million pounds to stop, somehow work to stop uh, these. Uh, uh, telemarketing type calls uh, from call centers and so on. This might be a bit of a stretch, but do you see any application of your service in Western countries where there are increasing number of these uh, barriers, I suppose? The, uh, so fundamentally, what uh, we agree as a, as a business model, we completely agree with all of those kind of regulations to stop the spam type marketing. Uh, where the application comes in, and it may not be a missed call behavior, or I think in the UK you used to call it drop call, <laughs> but it may not be that kind of behavior, but the point is let it be a simple on-demand experience. Put the control in the consumer's hands. Don't blast messages, because if you're blasting messages that they're not responding to anyway or don't want to read anyway, you're probably damaging your brand. So give very easy access and give very simple ways to, to, to be able to express that you're interested, such as dialing a number that's toll free, and let the platform determine how, how much content any one particular user wants based on their level of engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, yesterday we heard that half of all smartphones in the world will be in the Asia Pacific. Does your service have something of a use-by date, whereby when everybody's on a smartphone, we won't need to do missed calls or drop calls anymore? If you're sitting at a traffic signal and you see a billboard with an ad, what, what's the easiest thing to do to respond to that ad? Dial a number. It takes half a second. Right, regardless of what device you're on. So you're future proof? And yeah, and you may not get an SMS or call back, but you will get an app notification that deep links you into the specific experience in the app. So so it's really it's really about that offline online bridge. And the offline online bridge will never go away. The ex you know, what happens, the experience you get once you do that offline call to action will be different as devices evolve and connectivity evolves, but there's still always that need for the offline online bridge. An extended conversation, ladies and gentlemen, Valerie Wag Wagoner from ZipDial, founder and chief executive. Thank you very much indeed.